Good morning and welcome to worship on this beautiful World Communion Sunday. Welcome to those who are here. Welcome back to our choir and our choral scholars. I have a very special helper with me today, Addison, and she's going to be um, helping with some music too, with the shaker, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have some things coming up in the life of the church. Um, next no, not next Sunday, two Sundays from now, October 17th at one o'clock, we're gonna have the blessing of the animals. Please bring your pets, make sure they're on a leash or in a carrier. We can even come to the car and give a blessing through the window if your pet is not cooperative that way. Um, so we will also at two o'clock have a special time for remembering our pets who are no longer with us because they're always part of our hearts. So October 17th at one o'clock, we're gonna have food trucks, um, some games and some fun things to do. Uh, we're hoping to have some community partners here with us. Um, we're still waiting to hear back from that, but please come bring your pets for that special blessing and um, time of remembrance. On October 24th, we are having our first Jazz Vespers. Uh, Micah Graves, you might remember him from our outdoor concert this summer. He also came and played um, jazz and did some improv with the children during a summer arts camp. He was wonderful. He's an amazing human being and musician. So we are going to really look forward to um, having Micah back with us. Uh, Bible study, Wednesday evenings, we are discussing um, some perhaps misconceptions about the Old Testament. Um, that is on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. You can contact the church office to get the Zoom link for that, so I hope you join us. It's never too late to join us. The conversation um, is always wonderful. Sometimes maybe the study isn't so great, but the conversation around it is really wonderful. So we are having a good time with that one. Uh, any other announcements that we need to, to make this day before we begin our time of worship? Okay. I am going to stumble my way through the opening prayer. Maori Wedu, our God who is, Musiki Wedu, our Creator God, Nyadenga Wedu, our Heavenly Father, bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships. Bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people. Bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war. Bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world. Musita Rababa, Ner muana kon komana ner meweya must fene in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you into a time of quiet rest, of time of slowing the pace of your body and mind so that the spirit can settle. As we listen, together to the prayer that Ryan has prepared.
And now I invite you to join responsively in our call to worship. We gather from the east to the west, from the south to the north, to celebrate the God of peace who accompanies us in our acts of praise. This God of peace accompanies us in each and every circumstance around us. We praise God's name. Amen. And now with masks on, we will join our voices in hymn 388. Faced with God's goodness, we recognize our failings. In the knowledge of God's mercy, we dare to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. In the confidence of God's children, let us confess our sins. Gracious Lord, creator of this universe, in your generosity you have given us world of abundance and diversity, yet we live guided by greed and selfishness. We confess that we have defaced your creation and positioned our environment through our consumerist behavior and for personal gain. In Christ you made us brothers and sisters and intended for us to be united. And yet we have built walls to separate us from those who are different from us. You gave us wisdom and creativity, and we have used those to trick each other and to develop weapons of destruction and death. You gave us laws to order our lives, and we have abused them to take revenge and punish our enemies. We love war rather than strive for peace. We ignore the poor and the weak and honor the rich and powerful. In all this, we have not lived according to your will. Forgive us, Lord, for daring to boast in our human achievements and for failing to recognize that you alone are worthy of praise. 
in your mercy, forgive us. God's beloved people and God's beloved children. It is good for us to be honest because God knows us through and through anyway. And God offers everyone the grace and peace to take that hard look and yet know that they are loved. You are loved. God invites us to begin again to be better siblings to the world. So to that end, forgive each other, and most importantly, forgive yourselves, and feel God's peace. Amen. God accepted us simply because of our faith in Christ, through whom our sins are forgiven. May he help us to continue to preach peace to those who are near and far. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ is with you. And also with you. You are invited to turn to someone, give them a wave of peace. Peace. And... Get out your phones and give a word of peace to those who are with us online this day. It is always good to communicate. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> yes, I'd like to introduce you to my new assistant pastor, Addison. <laughs> She's doing a great job. What did Jesus say? Let the little children come. So that's one of the things I love about this congregation is that children feel at home here and know that they are loved. So welcome to our new assistant pastor. <laughs> oh, Addison, it's our time. It's our time together. Should we go down here? You have, oh my goodness, you're going to have to do all the work today with the candles. Grayson's at a soccer match. Here we go. I forgot to do this. What was I thinking? Oh my, there we go. So we have our Christ candle because Christ is the light and love in the world and we have our individual candles. Whoop, need a new battery. There we go. Yes, those are already on. There's one for Addison and Grayson and Gideon and Jackie and Jacob who are with us online and Pretend, we'll use our imaginations and pretend this is all lit up. I know, I think it needs a new battery. Oh, you got it to work, wonderful, very good. So that's for any of other new friends that we have watching with us today. So let's go over here. Look at this. There's a lot of stuff on there, isn't it? Why do we have all these things? Why do we have all these things today? It's, it's World Communion, isn't it? We have things from all, we have coconut and mangoes and gourds and we have challah bread and pumpernickel bread and we have man bread. This is a dragon fruit, look at that. An avocado, 
pomegranate and more gourds, yes, to represent things from all over the world. Today, people are celebrating communion all over the world. Yeah. All right, let's have a seat. And because it's World Communion Sunday, it's also Peacemaking Sunday. Oh, Dolly, the assistant assistant pastor. There we go. We can't forget the assistant assistant. Yeah. All right, there we go. There's Dolly. All right. So because we are celebrating Peacemaking Sunday all over the world, too, we have greetings from Effie in Greece who says Irini, and Natal in Cameroon, and Hilavio in Madagascar say Pax, and Peter in Nigeria says Salmon Lafia, Douglas in Mexico says Paz, and Julie in Rwanda says Horo, and Jonathan in Malawi says Matende, and we say Peace, Peace, can you say it really loud? Peace, Peace. very good, how about you guys? Peace. Excellent. Excellent. So today we want to lift up all the people in the world who help to make peace, right? They want people to stop fighting and get along with each other and talk to each other mm -hmm, so that we can have peace, so that children can grow up in peace, right? And not have to worry. That would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Yes. So we've said peace in different languages because people all over the world want the same thing. They want God's peace. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have our prayer together. Okay. Loving God, we give thanks that you are a God of peace. Help us to speak peace. In all, languages. in all languages. We pray this, we pray this. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, very good, assistant and assistant. Thank you so much. You're going to color? Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 85, and I invite you to now listen to these words from Scripture. Yahweh, favor your land once again, and restore the futures of Israel. Forgive the guilt of your people, and cover all their sins. Set aside all your anger, and calm the heat of your rage. Return to us, O God, our, of our deliverance. Put an end to your displeasure with us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will your wrath continue from one generation to the next? Won't you revive us again so that your people can rejoice in you? Let us see your mercy, Yahweh, a voice that speaks of peace, peace of your people, and your friends, so long as they don't return to their folly. Your salvation is near for those who revere you, and your glory will dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Fidelity will sprout from the earth, and justice will lean down from heaven. Yahweh will give us what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Justice will march before you, Yahweh, and peace will prepare the way for your steps. Here ends the reading of the Lord.
I invite you to listen again for the word of God as found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside, and after he sat down and the disciples had gathered around, Jesus began to teach them. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who are mourning. They shall be consoled. Blessed are those who are gentle. They will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. They will have their fill. Blessed are those who show mercy to others. They will be shown mercy. Blessed are those whose hearts are clean. They will see God. Blessed are those who work for peace. They will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their struggle for justice. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of all peoples, God of all lands, let your word resound within our hearts and souls this day. And to that end, Lord, speak to our speaking, speak to our listening, and speak to our souls deep understanding. Amen. I love that image in the psalm, justice and peace coming together, embracing. It's a beautiful image, isn't it? In some translations, it is justice and peace join hands. In others, it's justice and peace kiss. There is a deep connection in both testaments. Peace and justice go together. We find peace and justice intermingled in those testaments, both the one we call the Old Testament, in which I prefer to refer to it as the Hebrew Testament or Hebrew Scripture, and the New Testament or Greek Testament. Because in each we learn that God desires peace for all people, real peace, the kind of peace that requires justice. Real peace that isn't just a patching over. Real peace that doesn't require peacekeepers who bear arms to keep peace. And for that to happen, justice and peace must embrace. Yes, I realize the sometimes necessity for peacekeeping so that people have a chance to live and breathe and feel some modicum of safety, especially for children, so that they can play without worry. I understand that. There is a time for that, but there is also at the same time work that should be going on to solve those issues and to bring peace and justice together so that they can embrace. Because if peace and justice don't embrace, then violence erupts again. We see it time and time again around the world. God, the God of all peoples in both testaments, desires that we work to have real peace, and that is hard work. It takes a commitment to keep working for peace, even when discussions become heated, even when people become angry, even when tempers flare, even when we have to admit to past mistakes. It takes a commitment from God's people, whether Christian or Jew or Muslim or Hindu or Sikh or whatever religion or no religion they follow, to admit when we've gotten it uh, maybe wrong because we haven't listened closely and have inadvertently contributed to the hurt of others. We don't intentionally go out to hurt people, we're good people, or commit injustice, but it does happen if we don't have a full understanding of the issues, when we haven't listened deeply to both sides. So what does God's peace look like when it embraces justice? 
when it joins hands. Well, it looks like working to end racism. And that's a tough one because people squirm at that. Right? I'm not a racist. No, you're not. No one is saying you are. No one's pointing fingers. But when we say that, we put up the roadblocks, don't we? We put up our barriers. We become defensive, and we don't want to talk about it anymore, but it needs to be talked about openly, non-defensively. And we can do that as people of God, as followers of Jesus. We need to do that work. We need to make that commitment to peace and justice here in this place. And we are. Because peace and justice looks like our continuing education on racism and how institutionalized it has become. It looks like us reading right fragility together as much as it made us squirm at first. It looks like reading together how to be an anti-racist. Because it isn't that we are racist, it's that maybe just maybe we don't speak up. Maybe we need to be better allies in ending it. That's justice and peace coming together. What does justice and peace look like in God's realm? It looks like food equity. People having equal access to food, healthy food, not just junk food. It looks like farmers in other countries keeping their land in order to feed themselves and their neighbors. It looks like big agro companies not clear-cutting fields that destroys an environment for the local farmers. It looks like tenant farmers receiving a fair price. It looks like small farmers being paid fairly for their crops. It looks like people like us buying local or buying fair trade products internationally. What does God's peace look like? It looks like justice for the oppressed, the truly oppressed, not just who think they're oppressed when they aren't in complete control or they have to share something. It looks like being good neighbors. It looks like supporting Amnesty International, perhaps. They work to free those unjustly imprisoned, those who are being tortured. It looks like congregations educating themselves again on issues, looking where our personal investments might be going and what they're supporting looking to our denomination and where our investments are, and taking the time to understand. What does justice and peace look like when they join hands, when they embrace, when they kiss? It looks like taking Jesus very seriously, especially in Matthew 25. What does that say? Where did we see you? Where did we see you, Jesus? You saw me when you gave food to the poor, to the hungry, when you helped the widow and the orphan, when you cared for the foreigner in your midst. You saw me then, when you visited the prisoner. Justice and peace embracing looks like Matthew 25, and it looks like congregations like us living into those words. It takes courage. It takes commitment. It also looks like peace within ourselves. And peace within ourselves means that we have to accept who we are, flaws and all, imperfect people who sometimes don't get it right. And yet we work to be more Christ-like. That is our call. It looks like we read books like White Fragility and we don't get all defensive. We lower our defenses and become vulnerable, just as Jesus did. What does God's peace look like? It looks like a forgiven people trying hard to get it right. It looks like God's people being reminded that they need to follow God's desiring and not go off into folly like the psalmist writes about. The psalmist calls on God to restore the fortunes of Israel. Let us see your mercy, Yahweh. A voice that speaks of peace, peace for your people and your friends so long as they don't return to that folly 
And what was Israel's folly? Not pursuing peace and justice, not caring for the widow and orphan, feeding the hungry, lifting up the poor, unbinding the oppressed, caring for the foreigner in their midst. Remember, Israel, you were strangers in the land of Egypt. What does God's peace look like? It looks like all of us taking that breath, remember? <sighs> Reorienting ourselves to God, aligning ourselves with God's will before we act or speak. It looks like all of us supporting the mission and ministries of this church, of our denomination. All those names I read to Addie, they are working for peace all over the world true peace, peace and justice. It looks like all of us working to make this space, this church, one of peace and respite for people, especially children, who find little peace elsewhere. It looks like all of us putting aside differences and working together and finding allies, just as Jesus spoke about last Sunday in the scriptures, they're doing good. Look at the fruits of their labor. They don't have to be exactly like us. They don't have to be one of our group. We're working towards the same goal. It looks like all of us working together with others for a peaceful world, a peaceful community, a peaceful Wilmington. It looks like all of us living into our vision statement, living our faith as people who trust God, trust in Jesus in all things. And if you need some more practical ways to do that, our wonderful admin, Nancy, found 10 practical ways to walk toward justice. Trust Nancy, right? One, replace a mass manufactured product in your home with something handcrafted that directly benefits the person who created it. Use social media to support justice. Try a new handicraft. Select a small activity and spark your ideas about creative justice and your rightful place in the work. Tell your truth with a safe, valued friend. Tell your truth. I love that one. Say a prayer of thanksgiving for artisans and producers who labor to make the things you use every day. It gives you a new appreciation for them, like coffee, tea, clothing, food, and soap, because so many times those people who are producing are children. Volunteer for a justice organization near you. It's important to give back, isn't it? We know that as followers of Jesus. Sit at a table with people you don't normally sit with. Okay, not so much in the time of COVID, but perhaps striking up a conversation with somebody you wouldn't normally talk to. Select a book, a documentary, or TV show that expands your awareness and knowledge of justice. Commit that you will speak out when you see injustice. That's a tough one, because it can be scary. But we trust in God and Jesus in all things. We will find the courage. And if we don't in that moment, we will have another opportunity and we'll be ready. Financially support a justice organization monthly. These are all things that we can do to ensure that justice and peace embrace. Blessed are those who work for peace, for they embrace justice and will be called the children of God. Be a blessing not just this day, but every day, for peace and justice. Amen.
and let's stand and sing hymn number 340. This is my song. Peace and glo Global Witness offering that we are receiving today goes toward the work of peace, reconciliation, and justice in our community, our region, and the world. God calls each of us to the work of peace. May we respond to God's call and to God's love with generous hearts and hands. You may place your offerings in the offering plate here by the door send a check to our physical address, or go online and make a donation at www.covenantde.org.
Now join me in unison as we dedicate our offering. Generous God, we bring these, our gifts, to you as a symbol of our commitment to continue the work you have called us to do in your name, the work of reconciliation and peace and justice in the world and in our community. We offer our resources, confident that you are the God of peace at work in the world. Transform these gifts your peace may be experienced at all times and in all ways. Transform our hearts and move us to action. We lift up those serving as mission co-workers in the world, radically sharing your vision of peace and justice and your love with the communities in which they live and work. May they be an inspiration to us as we go about the work of peace in our families and community. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I just want to say what a joy it is to hear the choir. So wonderful, I see so many, I see a new face too. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is so good to see you all and to hear you all. It's wonderful. Choir rehearsal is when? Uh, so the next choir rehearsal is the two weeks from now on a Thursday. So I think the six, what's it, the? Two weeks from now on the Thursday. Last Thursday, before the 17th. The, the, yes. 14th, October 14th. <laughs> we are not rehearsing every week. Twice a month. It's twice a month, folks. Come and sing. It's so glorious. It's wonderful. I also want to point out that all our liturgy today is from different areas of the world um, and different um, folks, summer theology students in school around the world. Um, take a moment and look and see um, where some of these liturgies come from. So let us gather our hearts together now in prayer. From every place on this planet, we turn our face to you, O God. Gather us, all your people, together to pray. In the midst of the forces which would separate us, bind us in your love as the church together. Strengthen us through the grace of your people gathered no matter how we gather, whether in person or online, you are present with us, and so is your truth. In a world aching to be made new, we cry out with those who suffer the pains of what powers and principalities extract from the world's poorest. We cry out with those suffering from illness and disease at whom the world turns a callous glance. We cry out with those stinging from the sins of white supremacy. We cry out with those seeking justice, equality, and peace. Peace at all times, in all ways. In a world stretching toward wholeness, we celebrate with those whose lives bear the fruit of your spirit and seek to share your call in partnership. We celebrate with those whose efforts are making the world new. We celebrate with all who gather to earnestly seek your transforming work in the world. Make us a world that grows into the shape of your communion table, where all are welcomed and all are fed. Make us a people who grow your family by practices of mutuality, generosity, and justice. And may we be found to be witnesses when Jesus returns to the truth of who we were created to be, people who belong to each other, people who belong to you, O oh God, in your Son, Jesus. And as your people, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the table to which Jesus invites us. Let us participate joyfully. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. Loving God, you made this the world the world marvelous for us to enjoy. You gave Jesus to be our savior and friend, to draw us closer to you. You sent your spirit to make us one family in Christ. For these gifts of your love, we thank you and we join with the angels and the saints in this joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For your kindness to us and your goodness to us, we give you thanks. We thank you that you showed your love by sending your son who gave his life for us who you raised from death and lives to pray for us forever. We thank you that he has taken away all that separates us from you. We thank you that he has brought us together at this table to strengthen us by his love. We send your Holy Spirit on us and these your gifts of bread and wine, that we may know Christ's presence, real and true, and be his faithful followers, showing your love for the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the midst of war and hunger, we celebrate the promise of plenty and peace. In the midst of doubt and despair, we celebrate the promise of faith and hope. In the midst of hatred and death, we celebrate the promise of love and life. In the midst of oppression and injustice, we celebrate the promise of righteousness and justice. In the midst of death on every side, we celebrate the promise of the living Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, forever and amen. As we move to the table to break bread and pour wine, juice, you are invited to come forward, and Ginny and I will serve with gloves on, we will hand you the bread, a piece of bread, and a cup as you come by. And we will serve the choir first. give thanks for this bread. 
fruit of the earth and hard work, a gift of the grace of God. We break it and we share it, remembering the words and actions, gestures and glances, silences and self-authored life of the teacher from Nazareth. This is his body broken for us. We pour this fruit of the vine in remembrance of Jesus, who gave it to those seated around him out of love and compassion. This is the new covenant sealed with my blood. We do this remembering alliances, those working towards our same goals of justice and peace, embracing. We do this and we remember. The food of God for the people of God. Come and be filled. I can uh, drink. Yeah.
Let's join in our prayer after communion. We bless you, O God, for the gifts of bread and cup, for sustaining us in hope every day of our lives. We pray for strength to prepare us now for your service as we offer to you lives of witness and worship in the world you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's stand and sing our final hymn, number 598. join our voices together as we say our vision statement. We are a congregation loving God, connecting people, changing lives, and reflecting Christ to the world. And now, beloved people of God, followers of Jesus Christ, go into the world this day feeling that deep connection with the Spirit and being blessings, peacemakers, children of God. Amen. Amen.